Welcome everyone, Questine here on Serious Gaming, bringing guys the Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Middle-earth on hard difficulty. Going to be playing the evil campaign first off, then the good campaign. The reason for that is that the evil campaign is more interesting, it's a what if scenario, what if evil had won. Uh, and it's uh, also more challenging, especially in the early missions. End game for both sides, it becomes pretty easy, but more so with evil than good. Like good in uh, the final mission specifically has it pretty tough, um, especially if you haven't gotten a powerful army by that point. Uh, but but it's still relatively easy, com especially compared to the beginning of the game, especially when you're talking about evil. So yeah. You have Christopher Lee voicing Saruman, Andy Serkis voicing Gollum, and you have uh, Ian McKellen voicing Gandalf in this. Gandalf narrates the good campaign, Saruman nar narrates the evil campaign. So yeah, you, you have two top voice actors and you have a great deal of assets used from the movies, because this game was made with a movie license. So they were restricted to things that happened in the movies, uh, characters that showed up in the movies, um, people in general that showed up in the movies um, soldiers types of soldiers that were in the movies so you don't have say for instance the Knights of Dol Amroth I've watched the movies I've enjoyed them a great deal uh, I actually started getting interested in uh, Lord of the Rings with by watching the Return of the King movie I knew about Lord of the Rings before that I had tried reading the Fellowship of the Ring but uh, it's it's not an interesting novel, in my opinion, for the most part. Like, there are good portions in Fellowship of the Ring, but just, let me just put it like this. I'm not really all that interested in most of Frodo's story. I know that's heresy for quite a lot of Lord of the Rings fans, but I just don't care about this character. I don't care about the Hobbits in general. For me, Gondor, Rohan, characters like Boromir, Faramir, Denifor, uh, Imrahil, Legolas, Gimli, etc., they're more interesting, a lot more interesting, some of them, uh, than Frodo and his journey. Though that's kind of the main plot of the books, like Frodo and his journey. Or one of the main threads in uh, Dover's story in um, the books. Um, so yeah, they had the movie license, so they... With that, uh, they couldn't use everything that's in the universe, but they did gain a number of things because of that. They gained a great deal of assets, a few assets used in the movies, like some songs um, and scenes from the movies as well. You'll see in just a second. The Dark Lord Sauron must reclaim the One Ring. With its power unleashed, he will dominate all of Middle-earth. Only Gondor lies between Mordor and the lands beyond. Once it falls, all of Middle-earth shall be Sauron's. Rohan, the lands of the Horse Lords. Soon these lands will have a new master. Okay, the locations here are designed like they were in the movies. So you have Minas Tirith with the white lower wall even though lore wise did not the lower wall of Minas Tirith, the lowest wall of Minas Tirith, was black it was made of the same material as Ortank uh, the tower in Isengard is made of and it was pretty much impenetrable by most weapons I think some powerful magic or earthquake or a powerful earthquake if I recall correctly could have destroyed it but beyond that not not that many weapons could have um, not much could have destroyed the lower wall of Minas Tirith uh, and you have scenes from the movies like if you go over certain locations you'll see like let's go over Isengard you have Isengard's army which is Saruman well not just Saruman you'll gain two units at the beginning here you're gonna have to build Isengard's horde yourself it will make you appreciate the trouble Sar Saruman went through to build an army lore wise movie wise you could say you could say he just summoned an army out of thin air lore wise he um he had he used work orcs from the Misty Mountains and he bred them together with humans to get um, to get the Wurkheim 
And uh, one thing, at Helm's Deep, Saruman, uh, book-wise, had 10,000 Rokai, 4,000, 3,000, or 4,000 Orcs, and 3,000 Dunladings. And these were people who were living pretty much in this area here, give or take, and they were opposed to Rohan. So they fought for Saruman at Helm's Deep. Also have uh, like Rivendell scene. You have Mirkwood there. You have the Black Gate if you go here. Yes, Black Gate. Uh, eventually you'll gain control of uh, four armies in total if you're playing as evil. If you're playing as good, you're gonna gain control of two armies in total. You know, personally I would have preferred just to have a uh, two armies as I do with good the reason behind that is you will have two Isengard armies and so you're so and these are the only two armies with actual actual heroes as good you have a great deal of heroes at your disposal though for most of the game for a good I wouldn't say most but for a good chunk of the game you're just controlling Elmer with his Rohirrim then you gain control of Faramir and his army uh, and, uh, what's it called the Philion yeah, Northern Philion then you gain access to other heroes. But yeah, for much of the game you do have, even with good, you just have armies with one hero. But then you alternate between fellowship missions and um, hero missions and Gondor missions and Minister if it happens and you gain a great deal of heroes in both your armies. I would have wanted just one Isengard army. So those two Isengard armies and you're gonna gain control of this army, yes, 40 orcs. You know, imagine the hordes of Mordor without the hordes of Mordor. Low quality troops, very, very bad troops, in my opinion. You're also gonna gain control of this army, 60 orcs, two trolls, you're gonna take take Osgiliath with this army. Yeah, so Osgiliath with 60 orcs and two trolls, it's gonna happen. Uh, there are f five, five good armies in total. There's this Gondorian army that's defending Osgiliath. There's this Gondor army defending um, Minas Tirith. 80 archers, 80 soldiers, 30 knights. Um, 50 archers, 50 soldiers, 8 trebuchets. This one, you're actually gonna fight in this mission, 20 archers, 60 Rohirrim. It sounds like a lot, especially when considering that you don't have any units, but it just essentially boils down to fighting, uh, give or take 14 units. Because units are split in battalions. Uh, for good, it's generally, f yeah, for good, it's five units. Uh, for evil, it's uh, generally 10 units. Unless you're talking about uh, the Soldiers of Rune or the Haradrim, which are five units each. Or if you're talking about special units like Trolls or Mumakil. And you also have this uh, Ent Army, three beards, six Ents, 20 Archers. Those are Elves, by the way. And you have this Rohan Army, Elmer, 60 Rohirrim. And you have this Army of Lords. And these three armies, there are three. There's... I'm not sure, yes, you can see it here. Soldiers of Rune army, 100 soldiers of Rune, evil men, whatever. Uh, these armies are not gonna... Uh... Actually, let me see something here. So that's Act 15, okay. Yeah, these three armies are gonna stay and defend Mordor. <laughs> I would have wished to command an army of 300 orcs and 20 trolls. 20 trolls, that'll, that's a lot, anyway. I've rambled on enough, let's actually begin this game. Heisengard. There's a lot to say here, though. Once allied to Gondor, this land now serves a new master, the Dark Lord Sauron. After the fall of Numenor, um, Isildur and his uh, sons came to Middle-earth and they built... Uh, they built Minas Tirith, they built uh, Minas if Ifil, with it, which is Minas Morgul, and by the time of the Third Age, they built us. Um, they built Orthanc, they built, built us Giliath, which was actually the capital of Gondor for a time. Build me an army worthy of Mordor. So you start with. Uh, 
feed our forges with wood from the great forests of Fungor with enough fuel we should breed a mighty army of orcs. Yeah, you're gonna get a lot of movie scenes and hearing Christopher Lee and Ian McKellen is quite awesome as Gandalf, uh, as Saruman and Gandalf. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, you start off with a bunch of workers here. They're gonna chop down wood inside of Isengard and they're gonna reveal plots build plots for you to build structures in. This game has an interesting base system. You have a base or you can have several. Uh, you have a location for a camp, you build a camp there and within that camp you have certain build plots where you build structures. I actually really like it personally. So for now I can just build an Isengard or a pit right here. Now the goal is to train a hundred orcs. I'm probably gonna train more than that. Now this is this game has a rank system for units and heroes, and units persist from mission to mission for the most part. N not all of them, mind you. Not all of them. So that's something you need to consider here. Like I start off with these uh, single rank, uh, single unit, unit uh, or single soldier pikemen. Uh, and uh, they just kill those horsemen there, but they died as well. Horses generally die against pikes. Or they, and, or they take a lot of damage against pikes. So you start off talking about the ranking system. You, you can uh, rank up units all the way up to 10. In Battle for Middle Earth 2, it's all the way up to 5. Um, but in the campaigns, you can only rank units one level before the um, before it slows down significantly. Before the rate at which they rank up slows down significantly, so that's something you want to consider here. You start off with these two units, they're both rank 2. They're not going to level up since the game made them rank 2 already. They um, right here, and the, the game also gave them uh, fire arrows, so yeah. Gonna use Saruman against these archers. Those are 10 archers, there's 10 more. Okay, what I'm gonna do is get four Urukai units. Yeah, I'm killing them off. I don't think they actually take any command points. Armies persist from mission to mission, by the way. So, do you want to get high rank un ranked units at the end of each mission. What's best is that if you uh, get one rank for each unit in your army per mission. That's how you should do it. Buildings can also rank up. They're not limited by the same... Uh, Restrictions as your regular units are, as your units are actually. We have found a good okay. Gonna get another lumber mill right there. You start off with a bunch of workers over there. We have work to do. Reina. <laughs> now Urukai have this ability. Which is bloodthirsty. To gain experience by killing fellow units, fellow works. So I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna finish this mission with rank 2 units, with a great deal of rank 2 units. I'm gonna make. Uh, you can also combine units. These are called hordes for the evil side, they're called hordes, and you can combine them. Units have formations as well, which give them bonuses, depends on the unit, like they have wedge formation which gives them damage but reduces their armor by a significant amount. Now the ends in this mission are a lot, um, a lot more easier to deal with than regular ends. They have a lot less HP. They deal a lot less damage than regular ends. 
And regular ants are much more powerful than this. Okay, building more work pits. I don't need to, like just one is enough, but there is a reason behind it. Like there are side objectives, some of them it's indicated that you do complete them. Also gonna get war chant, it's quite useful. Like your units will do 50% more damage and have 50% more armor for the duration of the spell. Rid me of these elves. Ah, no one. And then you have elves attacking. Time has come. Crossbows. None shall oppose us. Follow me. We will not let you defile our forest. Hear the ways. Move on. Nothing will stand in our way. Kill the elves. Yes, yes. I'm trying to get the Norukai. Crossbow unit, so I can level it up. Come on. If this doesn't, if I can't rank these up, then I'll just suicide them. Or maybe not. Actually, I'll just combine them with a Urukai unit. No need to suicide them. Yeah, I'll just let Saruman gain a level. This will not avail you. We have found a good place for building. So that's one unit. Gonna get four. So three more. Attack. Show them no mercy. Back away. You can get another power. Also, these powers, they give you certain abilities, but like with ranks, after you get one permission, it slows down significantly. If you even get one, mind you. More ants. Ants are vulnerable to woodcutters as well. Come on, shoot. Okay, he gained a level. That's nice. Now, War Tank, you can see the ants attacking War Tank there. They're not doing much damage, as you can notice. That. Actually, they're not doing any damage to War Tank itself. Why? Because War Tank. Like, during the Battle of I. The fall of Isengard, whatever. Um, the ants were able to take down the walls with ease. But they tried taking down Ore Tank and they couldn't even scratch Ore Tank. Pretty powerful creatures made out of solid wood can scratch Ore Tank. That's how powerful, uh, that's how durable Ore Tank actually is. Okay, now. Once you gain units that are ranked 2, they will regenerate fallen soldiers within the unit. So I'm not gonna wipe out this unit completely, just gonna kill a few of them inside the unit. 
And I believe I ran out of wood right there. I still have quite a lot of resources. Fix that I haven't built 16 buildings, however. Did I miss a plot? Build plot, that is. Yes, right there. Yeah, you, you can't repair buildings except the citadel within your um, settlement. Yes, yes, Saruman, just give me a fucking second. Yeah, three more crossbow units. You can't combine units of the same type, but you can combine them of different types. Like, I can combine these two. For instance. Okay. Yeah, gonna get a hundred units soon enough. Your command point limit can be increased by conquering territories. Territories give you different bonuses. Some give you a resource multiplier, meaning you earn more resources than you usually do. Some give you power points, some give you command points. As good you can go up to 300 command points, as evil you can go up to 500. Going. Meet back on the menu, boys. Stand back, rooks. Come here, you. We need the Uruk pit. The rooks are ready with their crossbows. Let them be. Don't fall behind. We're getting hungry. Oh, gonna train more Urukai units. Wake up! Uruks! Wake up! Crossbows! Our time has come. Wake up! Uruks! Uruks! Get ready to fight! Some buildings like uh, this lumber mill give bonuses, like uh, this decreases cost of all buildings. Saruman, 
Your army will only leave Isengard over our lifeless corpses. Okay, rank two. Yeah, combining all these units. Can also get upgrades, but I don't have access to anything for now. So I have four combinations. And two crossbow units that I'm not gonna combine yet. Gonna wait with these guys until I can get pikemen. Then gonna combine them with pikes. You get pikes, you get wargs, you get siege engines later on in the campaign. None shall oppose us. I don't think they need to re respawn any more units, so... Let's send these guys out. They're gonna die, mind you. They don't have a chance in hell against that entire army of 60 units. But they're all rank 1, except these forward units. These, uh, what? Free. Yeah, free units with standards, which are rank 3. So... Not much of a challenge. Not, none of these guys are upgraded, so. Good ready to fight. Uruks, Once you attack them, they'll charge inside or Isengard. And they'll do this first. Gonna send Saruman against them. Embrace my power! Just wait Come a bit. Myself. Just a bit. Let us go now. For some of my Over units to regenerate. Advance. Want to complete Quickly. that bonus objective? Come Why the hell my not? Servants. Quickly! Follow me! Advance! Hurry up! Advance! Onward! Advance! Hurry up! Quickly! Move on! Move on! Let us go now! Advance! Onward! Over here! Let us go now! Hurry up! Quickly! Follow me! Move on! Move on! Come, my servants! Uruks! Get ready to fight! Get ready to Get fight! Ready to fight. Ready weapons. Uruks! Get ready to fight! Uruks! We attack soon! Hmm. 85 in total. Well, I probably should get more. Let me just get one more unit. Actually, one more isn't gonna be enough, is it? I wonder if I get the Oracle Labor that counts as anything. Nope. Well, let's just get two Urukai units, I'll kill them in the next mission. So it doesn't matter. In the next mission, you'll get an extra crossbow unit, by the way. Just something I wanted to note here. Okay. Yes, I have completed all the bonus objectives. There we go! The Horde of Isengard rises. Against the power of Sauron, there can be no victory.
Okay. So. You can rename uh, certain units, like, uh, not heroes, but everything else, yes, you can name them to whatever you want. I'm not interested in that, however. So I'm gonna t have 10 combined hordes eventually, then I'm gonna have 4 war units, and that's gonna be my army. Not gonna go for the f Forest 500 unit limit, however. To fuel the industry of I could Iringa. get uh, 8 hordes and uh, 4 Fine war units, but the I don't want to. Home of the Ents, an excellent source of fuel to drive the engines of industry. Yeah, Fangorn is gonna be... A pretty long mission because you have to deal with the ants and then you have to deal with the elves as well. That's Treebeard for you and the ants gathering at the end moot. Treebeard has a speed aura to him, which makes ants around him faster. He's also pretty tough, he has a great deal of HP, he burns slower than other ants. Now ants become a lot more powerful. The Ents draw their strength from the Ent Moot. We must destroy it. Okay. Kill Treebeard. Here we arrive. We have much work to do. Feed our forges with wood from the great forests of Fangorn. With enough fuel, we shall breed a mighty army of orcs. Okay. Going to pause the video right here, Costine signing out. I should have paused it earlier, actually, before beginning this mission, but anyway.